In this podcast, I want to introduce the idea of population dynamics on Isle Royale. So the objective for this unit in ecology that we're focusing on is being able to explain the fluctuations in wolf and moose populations on Isle Royale between 1959 and 2011. So just to remind you, we already talked about this in class, but Isle Royale is a small island in Lake Superior. It is very long and very thin, and because of that, it's an ideal environment for ecologists to study because it's a closed system. It's not perfectly closed, but it is a closed system, and because of its small size, it's also a very uh, simple ecosystem compared to others. So moose first arrived on the island by swimming sort of early in the 20th century, probably like 1905, something like that. Wolves arrived almost uh, 40 to 50 years later, and there was a particularly severe winter in uh, 1949, and it literally froze over between the island and the mainland, and three wolves, uh, one female and two males, walked over to the island. This is the sort of a very simplified food web uh, for Ioreal. there are a number of different plant species, of course, on the island, but I want you to note that the critical plant species uh, in the context of this is the balsam fir, which provides uh, forage or food for the moose during winter. Literally um, 59% uh, of their diet comes from balsam fir. The moose are really the dominant or the main or the only, really, um, major herbivore on the planet, I mean not planet, on the island, and there are some beaver and there are some snow snowshoe here, but there are very other few, very few other herbivores on the island. Now, the number one predator on the island is the wolf, and basically 90% of their diet comes from moose. They do eat a little bit of snowshoe here and a little bit of beaver, but the majority of their food comes from moose. There are red foxes, but they are very, very rare, and they mainly feed on the snowshoe here. So in a sense, what makes IRL ideal to study is that there is, a, in some ways, a very simple ecosystem, and really it is balsam fir, moose, and wolves. So let's look what happened when um, the wolves arrived. So biologists have been studying Isle Royale since 1959. And so this graph shows um, the change or fluctuations in populations over time. Notice that this scale down here is the number of wolves, which is represented uh, by this line here. And so you can see that the population does go up and down quite a bit over this time period. Over here is the numbers of moose and so the scale is different so just be aware of that and so you can see that the moose have peaked and then crashed and then dropped again. So you need to be able to explain the ma- at least one major change in both moose and wolf population uh, during this time period. So, for example, I might ask you to explain uh, what's going on here or here, for example, where you have major crashes in both populations. So, there are two main factors that can affect uh, populations. One is density dependent, which is uh, factors that limit the population, um, and that effect is greater as the size of the population or the density of the population increases. So, those are density dependent. The second factors are density independent, and they limit the population regardless of how large or how dense the population is. So the population fluctuations that we saw on our, or are seeing on IRL come from basically these two factors. So some examples of density dependent, of course, are the availability of food, in particular balsam fir for the moose and the moose themselves for the wolves, disease, uh, stress, and predators. Density independent factors include things like fire, uh, climate change, 
and short-term weather. You're going to be doing some research uh, on these population fluctuations, but a couple of critical things you need to know. Uh, humans uh, introduced the canine parvovirus onto the island in uh, 1980, and that had a major impact on the wolf population. Warm summers and a, a general warmer climate have seen an increase in ticks, which are parasites that feed on the, uh, on the moose. And so there was a major tick outbreak in 1996. And to sort of let you know that what basically ticks do is they're such a pain to the moose that they are irritating, that the moose is scratching against trees, makes them lethargic, gives them less energy. Uh, in the process, they're rubbing off their fur. And so when winter comes, they've got less protection um, against the climate. And what's so not really a coincidence, but in 1996, there was an extremely severe winter just after uh, the outbreak of ticks. Another factor is that because all the wolves on the island are descended from just one female, there are some um, inbreeding and some genetic issues in the wolf population. And that was having an impact. But in 1997, uh, there was once again another severe winter, and there was a briefly a uh, ice bridge between the mainland and the island, and a single male wolf came over bringing fer, uh, some fresh genetic um, or fresh genes into the wolf population in 1997. I would suggest that you probably pause the video at this point and just look at these two maps. They show this, that information from 2007 that shows where the, you find the moose on the island and also where the wolf packs were and the locations of their kills in 1997. So I suggest you just pause this for a second, particularly focus on where you find the moose on the island. This image uh, shows you uh, the different types of plant vegetation and what's very important is that you've got to sort of understand that balsam fir is the main thing that um, the moose eat and if you look where you find balsam fir there are these major locations here and here. So think about that in terms of where you find the moose on the island. The problem for the moose is they've got to get access to food in winter uh, when the snow is covering the ground and so they need sort of low-lying shoots of balsam fir and over here is sort of the ideal environment for the moose. Whereas here this looks great over here but in winter this is all covered in snow and there's basically going to be no food for the moose here in winter. Okay, hopefully this video has been a little bit helpful. Your assignment now is to pick one major change uh, in either the moose or the wolf population. And to carry out some research, I suggest that you go to the IRL website. The Wikipedia site for IRL is also very good, and there's a national park site as well, but this is the best uh, site to go to. I would like you to write a short report uh, based on the change, and do that in a shared Google Doc. Uh, with your partner. Um, I've also provided some images in a Google Drive folder that's shared with you, so use those images in helping write your report. Okay, good luck.